Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Susie with Gemini Connect, and I'm coming at you from our brand new photo and video production studio, which we are still in the process of building out, but more on that to come in a future video. In today's video, I'm gonna pick up on where I left off in a previous video where I talked about the best cameras for beginner photographers. Is this the best camera for beginner photographers? My answer is yes. And in that video, which I'll leave a link to in the, in the description below, I ultimately recommended the Sony a6000 mirrorless camera line. Now, the problem with that recommendation is that Sony now has four cameras under the A6000 line. There's the A6000, the A6300, the A6500, and the brand new A6400. And there are quite a few differences between all those four cameras. So today we're gonna talk about all those differences and I'll recommend which camera is best for you. Now I did actually film this video before we moved, but I forgot to do the video intro, which is why we're doing it right now. So now we're gonna go back in time and I'm gonna tell you all about these four cameras under the Sony a6000 line. So before we talk about differences between all those cameras, we should probably talk about some similarities. So the camera body size hasn't really changed from the a6000 to the a6400. They're all about the same size. And so for me with my small hands, this is a fantastic little size. And so this camera even looks like a point and shoot. And so you don't necessarily get this camera mis mistaken for a pro uh, camera. So it's easier to take to events and you can stick it in your purse, stick it in your backpack, certain pockets if your pockets are big enough. There's a slight difference obviously in camera size and camera weight with the a6500 weighing the most at 16 ounces. I think this is like 14 ounces. So they're all about the same compact size. Um, in addition to that, all four cameras shoot about 24 megapixels and the battery is also the same. So the battery on these cameras is this little lithium ion rechargeable battery. I believe it's the same on the a7 II and the a7R2 cameras. And this camera battery isn't the greatest. On this camera, it'll last about 300 to 350 shots. So you're gonna wanna stock up on three to four of these batteries if you're out shooting for a whole day. As a little side note, Sony actually did make big improvements with this Z battery, which is shipping with all A7 III and A7 R3 camera bodies. Uh, unfortunately, it's not yet available for the A6000 lines. Um, there are rumors that maybe that's gonna happen in a future model, but if that does happen, then for sure the camera body size is gonna have to get bigger to accommodate this battery. But the Z battery is fantastic. I can shoot all day with this battery and not even come close to draining it. So this technology is great. But other than all those similarities, we have a lot of differences between all of these cameras. So the A6000 is the original camera under this line. So as, as a result, it has the least amount of features, but it has the lowest price. So for $500, you can get the A6000 body alone, which is a pretty good deal. And for an extra $100, you can get the little kit lens. This is a 16 to 50 millimeter, 3.5 to 5.6 kit lens. And when you power it on, it's an optical zoom. So it will change its length according to what focal length that you're at. But 16 to 50 is a fantastic range. It's a nice little mid range. And with an aperture like that, you can shoot decently well, low lighting. But if you're outdoors in daylight, this lens is gonna be fantastic. For the size of this lens, this lens, which is a mid-range zoom, is about the same size as Sony's official pancake lens. This is the 20 millimeter f2.8 lens. And so you really can't go wrong with this kit lens. So I recommend getting the kit lens uh, no matter which of the a6000 cameras that you get. So if you're on a budget and you're a beginning photographer and you don't need all the bells and whistles that come with the newest version of this camera, the a6000 is still a really, really solid investment. Now, if you're a advanced beginner or an intermediate photographer or video is something that you're starting to pick up, then the a6300 is a great camera to look at. The current cost for a A6300 body alone is $750, or it's $850 with the kit lens. And the main thing that you're gonna get for that money is the ability to shoot in 4K. 
So the A6000 shoots at 1080p, but the A6300 is the first camera of the rest of the line that offers 4K video recording. It also has an upgraded sensor and image processor, so you have more autofocus points that are more responsive and snappy. And it also has a magnesium alloy body for the camera. So the A6000 is mostly plastic, but from the A6300 and on, you get a much more solid body that's gonna withhold more of the elements when you're outside. You also get silent shooting with this camera and all models above it. Silent shooting is something that is pretty special for most mirrorless cameras. And it, when it says silent shooting, it actually means silent shooting. You don't hear anything from this camera. It is like whisper silent. And so it's a great feature to have, and it's only present on the A6300 and the camera models above it. You don't get silent shooting with the A6000. So a few months after Sony released the A6300, they released a new camera, the A6500. So the A6500 is the very first and currently the only camera out of the A6000 line to offer five axis in-camera image stabilization, also known as IBIS. And so what that does is that if you're doing handheld video or you're trying to shoot still photography in low light with a low shutter speed, then IBIS is really helpful for that. It'll help stabilize your video footage or your still photos. IBIS does come at a cost. Besides making the camera cost more expensive overall, when it's enabled, you also lose some battery life. In addition to IBIS, the A6500 also offers a LCD touchscreen, um, which is not available on the A6000 or the A6300. So the main reason to get the A6500 is if you really need that IBIS or that in-camera stabilization. And for most beginners, that's something that you don't need to worry about yet. And to me, even though there is some application for still photography, it's still a feature that is really needed if you're doing serious videography. So fast forward to the present, January 2019, and that is when Sony released the newest camera of the A6000 line, which is the A6400. And it definitely does sit in between the 6300 and the 6500. So the A6400 does ship with a brand new image processor and sensor. It is um, an upgrade even to the A6300 and the 6500. So it has more autofocus points that are, more, that are faster and more responsive. It also has an enhanced ISO range. So you can shoot it up to ISO 102,400 though I'm not really sure how great the image quality is at that ISO. And the A6400 finally gives us a flip screen. So on all other models of the A6000 line and also the A7R3 and the A7 III, we only get a flip out screen that goes this far, which is you know still helpful for getting alternative camera angles. But if you're trying to vlog or shoot in front of your camera, you can't see that LCD but the A6400 finally gives us a proper flip screen where it, it flips up all the way this way. So if you're vlogging, you can see yourself in the LCD. There is a bit of a flaw though, in that if you have a light on your hot shoe or a microphone, uh, which isn't unusual to have if you're doing video, then those things in your hot shoe are gonna block your LCD. So, if you really need a flip screen, then the A6400 gives you one, but it's not necessarily the best type of flip screen, depending on what kind of work you plan to do with it. And the A6400 still omits IBIS. So if you need IBIS or in-camera um, image stabilization, you still have to cough up the extra money to go for the A6500. So in summary, if you're on a budget and you're a beginning photographer, then the A6000 is a great investment. However, if you're an advanced beginner or an intermediate photographer and videography is something that you're thinking about getting serious about, then the A6300 is your best bet. And finally, if you have the budget and or need the latest and greatest specs for video and photography, mostly related to autofocus, low light performance, and in-camera image stabilization, then the A6400 or the A6500 would probably better suit your needs. But for most beginners or non-professionals looking for a, an everyday camera, I would really recommend looking at the A6000 or the A6300. Those cameras are lower in price. And for most beginners, it's realistic to recommend something that's slightly more affordable and not tell them to get a $1,000 camera. 
So for beginners or even intermediate photographers on a budget, I think that investing in the A6000 or the A6300 is a better investment. Use that extra money to invest in a lens, invest in other camera gear, because you're gonna need more than just the camera body at the end of the day. And the other thing to keep in mind if you're on a budget is that you can always buy used camera gear. You can buy used camera bodies or used camera lenses or just any accessories. They're available used on Amazon, on Adorama, b &H. They all have used sections and they'll offer you pretty good gear at a fraction of the price. So with that said, I'd like to turn it over to you. What camera would you recommend to other beginners? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. All right, so what do you think? Do you agree with me? Is the A6000 camera line best for beginners or intermediate photographers? Or would you totally recommend a completely different camera? Let me know in the comments below. And as I mentioned, Gemini Connect is in the process of building out a brand new video and photo production studio. So we'll be coming at you with brand new videos in a new space. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and leave a comment. That's the best way to support our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.